Hey, and welcome to Music and Mixing. Uh, for those of you who are kind of behind the scenes catching what we're doing here, we've been doing some testing lately, and uh, it's just not been working re lately. Like last week, we tried to do a show, and we got absolutely nothing. Would not work whatsoever. Um, this week, we tested today, and it just the bit rate was terrible, and even right now, it's all sketchy and stuff. I don't even know if we're going to be able to finish the show. I mean, it's uh, we just can't seem to get the bit rate and stuff up high where it's supposed to be quality and everything. Um, we're not sure what's causing it, and it's really sketchy right now. So we may run with this. Um, I'm going to start recording right now, so we, if we're probably going to do the show, and then we're going to record it and then just put up a good quality later. So if you're watching it live, you're going to get a bad quality. Um, but I'm going to record it so it'll go up good later. So I'm going to start again. All right, we are here again on a Wednesday night for Music and Mixing. I'm DJ Michael Joseph, and this show is mainly about the mix DJ, about the DJ who is trying to become a, a mix-type DJ, one that goes out to clubs and bars and stuff like that and mixes. And one of the things we're doing with the show is we're covering some different topics, and a lot of times my topics come up from people in the chat. And last week people were asking me about, do I use video samples, do I use audio samples uh, for scratching and different things like that? So I decided to do a show uh, about what I use and how and where to find them and how to use them and stuff like that. So tonight's entire show is going to be about samples and and we're going to kind of kind of label them and talk about them, stuff like that. Uh, so you kind of know what they are, you know where to get them and how to use them for different things like that. So that's what basically the whole show tonight is about: is is samples and tools and all that kind of stuff, loops and 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 what you can do with them and different things like that. So um, if you follow the show every week, we usually go through some stuff and then afterwards I take questions. So if you guys have questions, I am watching the chat live tonight. Um, so feel free uh, to hold your questions for a little bit longer uh, until we get further into it. And then I'll be able to go over some of the questions and answer them best I can, and uh, and and we'll just kind of go with that. Uh, there's a a lot of stuff that's in this more than you probably think, because uh, I know I've I've seen some people and heard heard them and, and they talked about things, and uh, I was like, no, there's a lot more to it than that. So you may be thinking sample a little tiny sound or something like that, but we're gonna take it to it's like its zillionth degree, and just kind of. <laughs> see, see what we can do with it tonight, all right? So let's start at the top here. I want to take a look at um, some stuff. Uh, we're going to call, there's a lot of names for, for the stuff that we're doing tonight. Uh, some people call them beats. Uh, some people call them samples. Some call them loops. Some call them drops. There's all kinds of different names. So we're just going to say they are DJ tools because a lot of times if you go and search and search for DJ tools, you will find these. And these could be anything from simple kick drum sounds to loops to samples to samples from movies where you throw a part over something like that. They can be a whole lot of different things. And and we're just going to lump them all into tools. But we are still going to break them down into what they are, each an individual one. Um, First is a beat, and that's any single sound like a, a kick drum. And one of the examples I'm going to use, I'm going to show us over here on Ableton. I'm going to change screens here for a second and scroll down to here. And we'll go here. And a sample would be something like this. Let me go to, all right, this is Ableton. And one of the things here is that all these are different sounds and samples and stuff like that. And I built something that we're going to play later. I'm going to show you a little bit. But a sample could be something like this. This is just a simple kick. So I'm going to play this line right here. And this line is going to be just a kick. So these are some of the tools that you could go and find Is in the sample things are just kicks. And if we go one up and listen to this one, it is just going to be a snare. And this is a piano chord. And this is a crash. Go from here. And I think somewhere in here I have a cowbell. Whoops. Solo out the cowbell. It's 
So these are some tools that you can that, that we talk about beats where people will download beats and this is what they're downloading music instrument samples and they can be a simple chord like uh, I think I have a, a bass line in here um, where's the bass line we'll do the bass line but you can hear the bass line we'll switch back here real quick here um, so this would be this this right here this bass line they're just simple go back play it again and these are things that you can download to create music. And again, a little bit later on, we're going to talk in more depth about creating music and stuff like that. Um, again, if you're watching, uh, please hold your questions at the end. I will get to them. Uh, so those are just some samples that you, like I said, that you guys can have. Um, some of the other things that they run are um, breaks. And uh, break is, is it, the word came from the old days where there would be a a break in a song, and it would be where the synth and the bass line and the vocals all disappeared. So all you had was the drum left, and a lot of guys would take those and loop those underneath and, and on top of other things. Um, James Brown's one drummer was very famous because everyone sampled his. Uh, his drums, Clyde, I can't remember his last name, Clyde something, um, but his samples for the breaks were always used. Um, now, also in the samples are, are certain things that can be put to use also, um, and they are samples like this from Virtue. They can be an applause. Oops, let me turn the volume up there. They can be boos. They could be Funny sounds, um, and they can be even simple things like vocals. Um, Howdy, Buckaroos! This is DJ Bushwax with Old Faithful. Okay. What's this? Make them clap to this. And those, those are just like I said. There's endless ones there. Um. um one of the ones here is uh, the old song from the uh, 70s, 80s, Atomic Dog. This is the acapella from Atomic Dog. This is the story of a famous dog. But the dog that chases its tail will be busy. Rapping dog. Funky dog. Hopping dog. House dog. And these, like I said, these are all just samples that, that you can go out and do. We can do, um, I just realized what that was, was clicking on and off there, is my hard drive is disengaging and reengaging, so... Um, that's what that was. I was hearing something go click, and I just realized what it was. So now I'm going to have to go all the way through and go back to the... And go back down to my samples. And where am I at here? And there can be stuff even like... There was a whole section out there, stuff you can buy, kung fu samples. Good. Seems that you've improved yourself. You should quit. From kung fu movies, video games, and like I said, these are just endless amounts of stuff out there that you can download. Uh, another thing that you can download are loops. Now, these loops are a little bit different than what you might think. Uh, they can be just drum loops, and that's what these are. Is just uh, like a four or an eight count of drum loops. So that's all this would be. And this one. Now, some of the loops can get quite complicated with a lot of stuff on there. Um, this is some of the beats and loops. This is multiple layers. Where it has a little bit more than the drums in there. Has a little bit of everything in there. Um... So there's like, like I said, that can be a lot, of, and they're all going to fall into the tools thing. And one of the next things, I just <laughs> that hard drive just keeps disconnecting and reconnecting. I'm going to plug it in somewhere else to see why it's doing that. So give me one second here. I don't want to spend the entire show plugging and unplugging it. So we're going to plug it in somewhere else and see if it see if it picks up better. But we're having a little trouble with that one there. So no. So now we're going to go back here to 
hard drives and it is not picked up yet on there so um, the fi well, ne next thing we're going to talk about is uh, uh, drops and drops are something that uh, DJs used to use a lot they don't use as much anymore um, but what what they are um, that's why it's unplugged and the whole entire thing was unplugged um, uh, DJs will use them as samples uh, to say their name um, I know other uh, radio stations will use them for things and it's just kind of like a, a an attention getter um, a, a collection of sounds to kind of get your attention um, and I gotta plug this back down here again for some mm -hmm. reason it is not picking up anywhere so we might have some issues thank you for tuning in this week so by the way um, those of you who tried to tune in last week we uh, had some problems and we're still having problems so we're fighting through it best we can um, I simply cannot plug in a a hard drive for some reason. <laughs> there we go. Everything's plugged in like it should be now. So let's see what it does. Um, but there are boatloads of samples. Uh, like I said, if I can get the hard drive to pick up, there we go. It is not corrupted. We're going to go here. We're going to do backup. We're going to do DJ music. And we're going to go down to uh, scratch stuff. All right. So we're also going to do drops. And like I said, some of the drops are like this. Uh, this is one of my drops that uh, I probably almost 20 years old. Um, and it's basically, like I said, a way to announce who you are. Like I said, radio stations use it to announce things. And this is one of my drops. You are listening to Michael Joseph, MJ in the mix. And here's the other one. Um, MC DJ MJ. And they, like I said, they're just ways to kind of announce things. And... Uh, that's what that. And the final one we're going to look at is called stems. And for those of you who don't know what a stem is, um, you saw me use the Ableton, Ableton thing earlier. And it had the multiple lines of, like a line for the bass, a line for the drum, a line for that. Well, they're actually putting that into DJ stuff now to where the native instruments uh, uh, controllers and stuff will run what's called a stem. And a stem is a track that has four tracks within it. And those four tracks never get separated you know, forwards and backwards are always synced. Um, but with the native instruments units, the controllers and, and, and the different things, you can shut off one of those four tracks and only hear one of them. And I'm going to show you an example of what that's like. And this is, again, where I tell people about as DJing develops and grows, you know, like my generation, it was a sound on one side, a sound on the other, and a mixer in the center, where stems puts four sounds on each side on a single deck. And the next generation is manipulating those to work that way. So this is what a stem looks like. Um, so if I would play the whole thing together, this is what it would be. You can see it come across here, and it's playing all four of these. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Okay, so now if I go with just the drums only, this is what you would hear. And if I go with just the bass only, this is what you would hear. Oops, let me turn that off. There we go. And the synths. And then the FX is the bottom one, and it's only a couple little ones here. Whoops, jump back here a bit. And if you put them all together. And like I said, as these develop, uh, a lot of the controllers now have them to where I can throw a song in and I'm playing that song and within that song while it's playing I can bring sections in and out as I want to and it and they never get unsynced so you're still only syncing a right track and a left track but within that left track and that right track there's four more tracks four four tracks that you can bring in and out evenly and that's what a stem is um, so the, anything that falls under all of those categories is what uh, what well, we're talking about, the DJ tools, the beats, the breaks, the samples, the loops, the drops, the stems, all of that are tools that a DJ can use to do stuff. And it could be anything from DJing out live to making music in your studio. And again, as the mix DJ, this is going to be a normal part of your life to where you're going to be making music, making redrums, making everything. It is an absolute must if you want to get into this field, whether you're just doing little edits of your own stuff or something like that. Uh, I advise you, if you want to get into the mix world, Get get some software that you're able to edit stuff and just start practicing editing. Edit, make any edits that you can ever imagine. And I think my next week's show is going to be about editing again, but we're going to go editing in a little different route next week. Um, but 
all of those things fall into that category right there. So everything falls into it that fits into the DJ tools, okay? So all of those are in there. So uh, we're going to take a quick break right here and uh, give a shout-out to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and DJ and TV Insiders. Definitely want to thank our sponsors for making the show possible. If it wasn't for them, uh, we couldn't do this. So thank you guys uh, for sponsoring us. And if you're watching the show, take some time. The links to all our sponsors are in the show notes below. Click on them. Go visit them. Tell them you saw saw them here on Music and Mixing on Disc Jockey News. All right, so now that you know what they are, we're going to talk about where you can get them. And there are so many places you can get these now where before you kind of really had to hunt or maybe you had to go through a record store or steal them from a friend. Um, but they are absolutely everywhere right now. Um, one of the ones that I'm going to be showing tonight, and this is kind of what people ask me about, was uh, do I use video or audio when I do my scratching? And the answer is both sometimes. And uh, I don't know if I put that one sample in here or not. It might be in there. I'll have to show it here in a second. But we're going to look through some sites where you can get it at. For those of you who use different softwares, we're going to show you right on the software sites where you use them. You can get them, and we're going to break it down to where you can even get them on eBay. And I'm going to surprise you with what you can get off of eBay. Um, so this is Serato's site, and one of the ones that people are asking me about is the video stuff. And this is one of the packs that they put out. This was a free pack. If you have Serato, you can download this pack. Um, uh, it's the Gamma Danger Volume 1 pack, and I actually did a video on Disc Jockey News, so if you go and look on Disc Jockey News and do a search for the Serato sample video, uh, it shows all of these. And one of the things you're going to notice is this here uh, is designed to overplay this. So you have this is a steady loop, okay? So this is just a drum at 94 BPM. These are samples, and the whole idea is, is that you can drop these samples in video form over top of all these other things, and they are made to overlay. And I'll show you real quick how that works so you can see that. Um, switch it up here. All right, so we're going to go back to, all right, so we're over here. And if I go and I grab the Serato samples, and they have bunches of them, and we're going to look at the Gamma Danger, and the Out of Control is here. So if we would run it just by itself, you would see these samples and videos running together. Testing one, two, three. Here we go. Run it. It's out of control. Oh. All right, so I can take that and I can scratch that right now. Whatever I want to do it. But the cool thing is with this is that if I take the other side over here, and I think it's this one. Um, I think it is, so we'll see if it's this. All right, so if I have that out, that's what you're going to get in that loop. And it's designed to run the two together, so you can overlay the two. And that's how the video things work. They are pretty simple, and they and they like I said, they just kind of overlay on each other. And the samples can be audio samples, or they can be video samples. But you can do the same thing. Um, I want to search and see if I have that in here. Um, um, what is his name? Um, I have to think here. Um, because there was a sample thing that I had downloaded uh, as, a, as a test and show you a little bit more what you can get, and I can't think of the guy's name. Um, I just totally blanked on his name. We're going to go on to some other things, and I'll come back to his name if I can find it and do a search on that. But some of the other places, like I said, that you can get it, um, Serato's site also, again, uh, some more loops. And these are different loops, things that you can get from them, and some of them are just video loops, some of them are other ones, and it's all from the Serato site. 
Um, virtual has its own. This this includes uh, uh, stuff that can be done as a sample to trigger, or stuff that is done to scratch. So you can do both with these right here. And we'll jump over here, and I'll pull out the sampler here, and let you see a few of those triggered. Um, so this this you'll see in the video here. I'm going to trigger this. I'm going to clean off the other two decks. All right, so I'm going to trigger this right here. Three, two. So if I were just triggering one. them, you would see the video come up too. But I can also take that sample if I want. Um, if I can find it, I think this might be it. Yeah, this is it. So it would be. And those are all built within virtual. So those are some options there that you guys can look at too. Um, let me go back to the other screen here. Oops, switching screens. Um, another great place to find these is uh, uh, mix a loop and there are different sites like this where you can just download packs of them. Um, beats, loops, sound effects, everything that you can actually imagine in there. Some are video, some are audio. Um, these are all places to hunt them down. Um, uh, DJ Tools is, is a part of Beatport. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Beatport in more than one way. Um, Beatport's a great place to get music, but you can also get your DJ tools from there, samples, loops, everything. Um, so if you have a subscription with them and different ones like that, um, all, I'm, I'm sure all of your, your uh, uh, subscription services have some sort of tools that you can get. How extensive they are, I don't know, um, but they're all there. Um, you can do a search online uh, for different ones, and Amazon is one, and you can buy them from there. And some of the volumes that you can get from the old days, there was a seven-record volume called uh, Beats, Breaks, and Scratches, and you can order still order them through uh, 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 Amazon. They come in as CD, and you would transfer them over, obviously, but they come in as CD. And then there was another one out there that you can still hunt for, and this was a 25-album set back in the days called Ultimate Breakbeats. Um, it was out in the late 80s, early 90s, and they were actually put out on record form, but you can get them in CD form. Um, but this is a real good source for some of those original samples and sounds that I use. Um, but as you can see, there's just there's so many on each one of these that you can get, and they're out there. Um, or you can also do a search for DJ Tools on eBay, and <laughs> there's stuff there you can buy. Again, a lot of them are in CD form, um, but you can get them if you want them. And that's just a few places where you can get them at. Um, there, Like I said, it's out there. You can get stuff from friends. I've been collecting sounds for years. Um, I just hunt for stuff. You can find stuff on YouTube if you want to steal it from YouTube. Um, there's plenty of options out there like that, too. So that's always an option. Um, but they're pretty much everywhere out there. Um, so now what can you do with these? Um, I think I just, wait a second here. Here it is. Here's the one I wanted to show you. This is the video samples. Um, we're going to switch back over to here. Whoops. My drive just jumped off and back on again. <laughs> There's something wrong with that connection tonight. Um, let me go back here and hunt that back up again. I think that the machine tonight is just being overtaxed with all the different things I've opened. Um, now we're going to search here and we're going to go back here. See if this loads it. I'm sorry about that. It's not loading it. Oh, it is going to load this time. All right, so here is what I was trying to show you before. I don't know why it's doing this. Um, but these are samples that you can buy. And again, as you can see, this this checkered area here is it's over, it's done in green screen style. So if I had another track on the other side, you'd see it behind it. But you can go out and buy even stuff like this. This is Fat Man Scoop. We all know his samples of him talking. And, but you can actually go and buy them like this. This is eye candy uh, uh, video uh, thing, I-C-A-N-D-Y video. And this is some of the stuff that you can buy from them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And again, scratchable. These are all stuff that you can buy these packs. So you can hear the hiss behind it is because this is a sample one. It's it's not one that you would buy. So you do that so you can't use it. And this is just him just standing there talking endlessly like this. But these are all things that you can do. All right, we're stopping him right there. Um, <laughs> so, again, these are things that you can, you can put to use. Uh, scratching, stuff like that. You can do stuff that is highlighting stuff. So if I go down and I get um, the All I Do Is Win by DJ Khaled, and then I go and this is uh, Public Enemy, some samples from Public Enemy. Yeah, boy! Base! How low can you go? And we're going to use this later. Let me. I'm going to show you some stuff later um, with this. But you can use it not only scratch, but you can use it to highlight things. And we're going to get to the drop on All I Do Is Win, which you all know where the drop is. And you're going to see me drop this in between the break-off. Simple little things like that. And like I said, this stuff really goes a long way with what you can do with them. Um, it's just about your level of creativity, whatever you want to do with that. And the final thing I want to show what you can do with this different samples and stuff um, is basically what we started with was making music. And I just took some basic beats and loops and different things like that and that I showed you earlier, the kick drums and stuff like that, and I put them together with the PE sample. And I'm going to show you a little bit what you can create with that in, in, in a short way, and then I'm going to show you another little trick on top of that. Again, this whole show is about the mix DJ, so it's about what, what you do as a mix DJ is sometimes you have to create music, create regions, create all these different things. And this is something, like I said, is going to normal part of your life. So if you want to be a part of this scene, this is some of the normal parts of the stuff you can do. All right, so we're going to play the whole track right here from the beginning. Um, as you can see, it's not very long, but there are two sections where the green is second, and it's basically the same samples. And I am going to be dropping in and out of them to do different things. So we got samples all the way to the top up here. Um, this bass line here, which you guys can hear this one real quick. Um, that's a guitar. We jump in further. Little sample. So now when you put all these different things together, this little... That's a drum loop. Oops, I want to go there. And this one here, little clicks and claps, all the ones you've heard before. Now we're going to put them all together now. Make sure the solo is off. That sample's all the way at the top, right here. I cut it all up. Second. Same things with some different stuff. That's a guitar over top the guitar. And that's basically, like I said, what you can do with these, all these different little samples. But we're going to do something different here. I'm going to play this one, which is your, which is your kick drum and your snare up here. This is your snare. All right, and I'm going to put those two together. And we have this bottom track down here. If you were to hear it by itself, it would be. So all I'm going to do is add this kick and that snare to that. And we're going to see what we get with that. Oops, let me do this. There and there. And this is what we get with just the kick, the snare, and that song. And again, just a few little things that you can do with some of the samples and all the tools as a DJ. And use all of them as often as you can. Um, like I said, with some of the virtual stuff, I'll drop the loops under it with, with that, that where you saw me uh, uh, trigger those effects. You can put loops in there so that they trigger and they will sync to the beat and stuff like that. So this is all the different tools that you can use as a DJ. Um, there's a lot there. 
Uh, so I hope that it kind of helped you guys with a little bit of information. That's kind of pretty much all I have on the information side of it, but I will be able to, um, it, you know, get into it further if you want, uh, describe different things about it, break it down more. Um, so if you guys have any questions, like I said, I, normally as, as you watch the show, um, I always probably say about 20 times a night, the show's about the mixed DJ, so it is about uh, uh, the, the DJ who wants to do and, and be creative and mixing, not just put a song on stand back. That's not what we're about. So all of this stuff is is proactive stuff that you would be doing as a DJ, and and that's what the whole tonight is about. Like I said, somebody asked me, a lot of my topics come because someone asked me about something, and they develop, and somebody asked me, do I use video or audio samples? And that's where this all built, showing that I use both depending on what I'm doing. And you can use all of them, some of them, part of them, but it's all tools that a DJ, like I said, who mixes, this is what you would do. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, I am live, you know, somebody missed the first 30 minutes. You've missed the entire lesson. Man. <laughs> it's all right. It is being recorded and uploaded. So whatever works on that one, um, let me know. Uh, again, this is, this is about you guys. So if you guys have questions, you know, you, like I said, the viewers, you guys are the ones that bring me all of the stuff. Um, so it's, it's you guys who come with the questions and different things like that. Um, here's the difference, uh, Peter, uh, the hubcap dude, I say hello to you. Uh, those of you, uh, we, we got to know him because when uh, he works out in Atlantic City where we go for the DJ Expo each year, and he's a great guy, great DJ, and he, he runs a jitney stand out there and, uh, and, and really loves the music scene in, in DJing. Um, and he asked the question, uh, when you create your own samples, would you create them as waves or MP3s? Here's the difference between the two, Okay. And, it, and it's kind of your choice, okay? An MP3 is a, a compressible file. So that means as the computer listens to it, there are sections within there in that entire waveform where there's no sound. And what it does is it compresses it in a form to be smaller, and then when it plays it, it decompresses it, okay? So an MP3 is, is sizable. A waveform is always the same size. So if you have a two-minute waveform with music in it or a two-minute waveform with complete silence, it's going to be the same size depending on the bit rate that you set it at. And the same way with MP3s, the bit rate depending on how much it compresses. They, To the average person, they're probably going to sound exactly the same, but here's where you possibly can get into some issues. It isn't a big thing, but if, you make, if I make a copy of that waveform, and give it to you, and then you take that and make a copy of it and give it to someone, and then they take that waveform and make a copy to give it to someone, all the way down the chain, that waveform is not degrading in quality and sound. The MP3 doing the same thing, they make a copy of it, give it to you, you make a copy, you give it to someone else. Each time that goes down, it's going to degrade a little. Not much that you can hear. Again, the average person won't hear it, um, but there's, there's not much difference. So it all depends on if it's space is more important or if quality of sound is more important. If quality of sound is more important, make them as waveforms. One of the things about Ableton, which I think is kind of neat, is that you can only export Ableton as a wave file. You cannot export Ableton as an MP3. So as I make something in Ableton and export it, if I want it to be MP3, I then have to convert it in MP3. Um, Ableton only, convert, only exports audio like that mix. If I were to export that into a song, all of those compressed together, uh, it would make a wave because they only do waves to keep the exact quality the same. So that's the difference. It's up to you. If space doesn't matter, do waveforms. But trust me, they take up a lot more space than, than MP3s and the average person. And most of us, unless we DJ on an awesome system, uh, sound-wise, you're probably not going to notice the difference either. So that is a great question. Um, when, you get in, when you get into some of the... Uh, some of the things when it comes to music quality and different things like that, that's where things get sketchy. And where they get even sketchier is this something that we've learned, we've been fighting with this show, is video. Is video is its own thing. So you get into different types of videos, different uh, 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 compressions, different decompressors. There's something I learned recently that I did not know. It, again, makes the whole world of video a little bit crazy. That uh, some of the streaming services like um, um, Netflix or, or, or Hulu or one of those, some phones are not equipped to decrypt that download streaming speed from those movie sites. So some phones out there can't even stream in HD because of this, this subscription service. So something as simple as that um, 
within the video world, how crazy the video world gets to where this works with this or this doesn't work with this or you got to have this or that. That's where things get a little sketchy. Um, I will tell you from my experience with virtual, I've never had a file that virtual can't play. That's one of the cool things that I like about it is that it really just kind of plays anything. So if you have a video that's a, a, an MPEG or video that's an MOV or a video that's it's whatever, it's going to play it. So, But there are other ones out there that can play it too. I'm not saying that's the only one, but I'm just saying that as crazy as we get with the MP3s and the MP3s, the MP3 qualities, the waves, the 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 um, uh, the lossless files, stuff like that, video goes even crazier on that. So um, when ripping, uh, David Wolf asks, when ripping MP3 from a CD, do you get full resolution or do you lose some of the quality? First off, um, if I wouldn't have taught a show tonight where I was saying that you could go and buy CDs, I would be like, why are you even using CDs? But a lot of people like getting CDs because um, it is a, a, a form that um, you can go out and buy a disc and get songs cheaper than you can download them. Because the cost, cost of downloading single songs, you can go out and buy a disc you know, from somewhere maybe five, you know, less than ten bucks, and you can get them. So ripping is, is something that's kind of interesting there. And again, depending on how you rip, uh, you will only get a CD at CD quality. So see if I can remember the numbers right. A cassette tape is twenty-two thousand bytes of sound per second. A CD is forty-four thousand bytes of sound per second. A record. This is why everybody said it's better quality. But here's where it gets a little different. A record is 111,000 bytes of sound per second, but some of those bytes of sound are static because the record is an analog thing going over a physical thing going over a physical thing. So noise is going to get filtered into that where the CD is a dead waveform that's squared off. So even though your samples are there. So as you rip from the CD to an MP3, if you rip at a high rate, you will never get above the CD rate, but you can get the CD rate if you do it at 320 uh, 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 bit rate. Uh, you'll you'll keep it there, or you can rip it as waveform and keep it absolutely solid, and then make yourself a copy of an MP3, and then go use. So you always have that waveform in high quality in your in your your collection of stuff. You know, uh, uh, Howie there talks about 320. Yeah, I, I can I can honestly tell you that there are files that I DJ with on a regular basis that are that are half of that. Uh, and most people don't know because a lot of the, the modern systems, like I said, with virtual, the way it does the auto gain and remember is that it will bump stuff. And, it, and it's really tough, especially, like I said, unless you're on a good sound system. As a mix DJ, a lot of times you're in bars and stuff that are crappy. Um, sound quality isn't something that you're going to be judged on. But if you do 320 out of there, that's the best you're going to get. And it's going to be it's going to be beautiful, I, I think, in my opinion. Um Going down here. Um, Ivan, explain if you could in there the ultra pitch records with scratch samples. We'll come back to that. Um, David said he's doing an eighties, eighties, an old eighties music and doing a 1983 class reunion. Um, you can get that on M MP3 now, Dave. Just to let you know, it's out there. Um, but I just, I was, uh, one of the places I, I used to DJ at uh, that they recently closed down, this was within this year, 2018, they had a private party, and the guy who was DJing the private party it was 100% DJing off CDs, just the old-fashioned stack books that he had out there with him. So people still use them. I personally haven't touched a CD since probably 2008 or 2007, maybe. I haven't, I mean, other than maybe ripping a few things off, um, I, I haven't done anything with that at all. So <laughs> CDs are something, like I said, I haven't spent a lot of time with in a long time, so whatever. <laughs> um, can you program those, Todd? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Todd has taken some of my classes. Um, can you put or program those loops, sounds, into the FX pads? You absolutely can put them into the FX pads on virtual. Um, I'm going to share here and show you because there is lots and lots of cool stuff here. Um, this is the sample section, and up here in the sampler, there are different sample pads, sample sections. And there's different ones in there that have different stuff. These are video samples that will they would play if I go here and bring that up, and you would see that. Those are overlays, stuff that you can trigger. Um, this is a kick sampler, uh, like you'll see. I'm going to go to a different kick sampler. But this is a kick 
If I were to find this kick in there, it would be a kick loop. And so that's all it is. When I trigger it, it's going to trigger the kick loop. And when it gets to the end, that's the end of the loop. Um, that's the one where I told you that if I put on a song there, um, if I threw this up here um, and were to play it, I could sync this kick drum in with that. Hear the kick drum in the background? And all those will work that way on, in any song on this. So you can create a sample deck with whatever you want on there with sounds. Uh, these are some of the ones, again, that come with virtual. But you can put the drums in there. You can put whatever. The same with, with some of these. These are uh, sounds that are beat sensitive, so they will also go to the beat. So if I go... If I slow it down, the sample goes along with it. So absolutely, you can put that stuff in there. Do so we have any questions? Yeah, BPM Supreme has a lot of 80s. There's a lot of down. BPM Supreme is one of my favorites. I really like them. Um, ah, okay, you're talking about, Ivan was talking about a very specific type of record that, that that's that's a whole nother show right there. Um, that's that's for a record. It, we're talking about an actual physical moving platter and stuff like that. So it, that's a little different than the sound pitching up or down. That's the f that's the physical speed of the platter changing and different things for scratching. Um, feel free to do a show on that, Ivan, or a video. <laughs> help yourself. I'm not going to go there, but help yourself because that's really detailed. There's probably a lot of guys that actually would like to hear about that because that's that's when you really get into the the level that Ivan's in with all the scratching and the different things and and the showmanship. Uh, that's like t that's like fine tuning a race car right there, and I, I think it's really awesome. Um, still have time, fifteen minutes. In fifteen minutes, you can ask me fifteen questions or less. Now, um, <laughs> I hope you guys like this topic again. Uh, it, it is one of the things I thought I think I knew, but I was doing some edits on some stuff, and uh, it really it, it kind of showed me what all you can do there. I think we lost. Um, I think we lost the uh, feed there for a minute. Okay, we're back. Um, oh, gosh. Somebody had to bring up country songs, of course. Now, see what you do with a country song, and I don't even know if it's in here. Um, no, I do not have that in here, so I can't show you that one. Um Um, I'm not sure how Ableton and Serato works when it comes to linking. I think I'm pretty sure you can. I'm almost positive you can uh, bridging it because I know virtual you can bridge it if you need to. And I'm pretty sure Serato does. And that gives you an option of, of using VSTs, which are uh, uh, like sound effects and different things like that with bridging that with Serato. Um, as a beginner DJ, I probably wouldn't say go that route. I would say just get your samples, put them in there, and run them as a, as a single side sound and a single side sound until you get into deeper stuff like that. Um, I know Ivan jumped in here late. I was talking a little bit ago, Ivan, and showing them about stems and what can be done with stems. Um, so there's there's a lot out there when it comes, like I said earlier in the show when we covered that, I covered a lot of that stuff uh, when it came to the samples and different things about the, you know, the uh, uh, stems and all the different styles of stuff like that. Um, Watching the chat for questions. I see our feed is just horrible tonight. And again, we tested today, and it was great, and then it just died. So I'm not sure what's going on. We are recording it, so we should be getting a good recording, and we'll put the recording up later as a better quality one if, if the feed doesn't feed in there quite well. Um, yeah, Tractor has great sample banks. That's that's what I'll, I'll show it again, Ivan, here so you can see that. Um, you missed it earlier. Uh here to the left side 
And this is basically this is this is from Beatport, and it's one of their stem samples. And again, if you missed it earlier, the whole thing plays, but you can also solo out different sounds. That's just the bass line, just the drums, and that's why when you run the stems. Basically, that's what it does. It gives you, in a device that can run stems, it gives you the opportunity to bring those in and out as you wish. Um, uh, they're talking about the update for the 8000, the, the firmware update. Um, a lot of good stuff on with that, that you're able to do stuff with the Prime Engine and being able to load stuff easier onto a thumb drive and, and set up your, 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 your thumb drives to be able to drop right into the 8000 and run off of that. It also gives you stuff that a lot of people aren't talking about this. I got this on my last firmware update on the 7000, which I thought was kind of cool, is that it gives you, where you hold down two buttons, it has nothing to do with software. Um, you take, you know, you, you load your uh, 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 firmware uh, into the computer, uh, and then into the device. And then from there, if you hold down two buttons and power it up, it gives you a mode to where you can then do fine adjustments to remember the mics on, on both the 7000 and 8000, a lot of them don't run through the hardware. There are, I mean, don't run through the software. They're hardware connection only. So your mic sound doesn't go through and out the computer and back down. It's, it's like a mixer, like the old day analog mixer. You are straight going from the mic out. But they give you adjustments in there now with the 8000 and the 7000, because I've done this, to where you can take your, your, um, gain plus or minus so many decibels and take your mic so that let's say your mic isn't all that loud you can take it in within the hardware and bump up the internal gain on the mic you can bump up how quickly if you use the dip or the talk over function to where the music drops as you're talking and it comes back up you can change the speed it it comes on and off and with what aggressiveness it comes on and off and those are all little things including uh also with the 8000 and 7000 new update it you can adjust the touch sensitivity of the platters so if you don't think it is sensitive enough to your touch or if you think it's too sensitive they now give you that option through that firmware and that special little uh, uh turn on thing um to change those if you like i changed my mic because i just wasn't happy with where the mic was set and now i'm happy with the mic was set and that's all comes with that hardware updates um so still taking questions from the chat. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you have any topic ideas, send them to me. Um, I definitely, we're still, like I said, we're still trying to work on this stupid frame rate. Why it's just so absolutely horrible. Um, not sure what we're going to do f in the future, but that's about all we can do for now. Um, but if you have topics, let me know. Stuff you want to hear. Uh, like I said, next week it's going to be a little bit about editing, I think, unless someone gives me a better topic. Um, we've got lots of cool stuff to cover. Um, I'm not really sure what all you guys would want. I think I think um, I, I've done shows in the past where I brought Ivan on, and I brought DJ Cadillac on, and I'm you know I'm also up for if you guys have any questions about stuff like that, and you know, I'm able to get people like that on the show and answer some stuff. I'd uh, be more than happy to do that if you guys want that. Um, but yeah, I I, I want to ask a question for those who are still in the chat, and if you're watching it, feel you know later on you know, on demand or listening, depending on how you want to do this. Um, feel free to answer, send me a, an answer to this. Have you been trying any of the things that I say to do in, in the classes? Have you been testing the stuff out? Have you been practicing mixing? Has it encouraged you to download new versions of songs to try them out? And let me know how, how it's working for you. Have you done any of this? Because I know last week uh, somebody was talking about that they, they tried to do beat juggling, and they said it was a little tough. And I encourage them just to keep trying because it will get easier. Just like lifting weights, the, the weight doesn't get lighter. You just get stronger, and that's the same with with practicing it doesn't get easier you just get better and and i encourage you to do that so i want to see if anybody has tried some of this stuff and see if any of this stuff is is working for you you know the the the, the tests and the music that i say to go look for and, and, and the scratching and different things you might want to give a try as a beginning mixer dj like i said a lot of this that i teach is for the beginning dj it isn't for someone who who's been doing it for 10 years or so it's for someone who goes I want to get into that field. It could be a young kid trying to get into the field or someone who's been just uh, the, the, the MC type wedding DJ who wants to now learn to mix to add to his, his arsenal of tools as he goes out and, be, and is an entertainer. Um, that's basically what I'm trying to do with the show is to get the beginner guys up. Um, we do cover a lot of crazy stuff, but I, it, most of this is about that. Um, so, do you have topics? Let me know. 
Um, I see you guys in the chat are still talking about the 8,000 and updates. Um, I honestly, like cause one person was talking about he has a lot of gigs. Um, number one, if you do decide to, to update to the new firmware, I would invest doing it. Let's say you have a gig on your last gig for that week is on a Saturday. Update it on Sunday and test it all week, number one. Um, you can wait until all your, your next eight weeks of stuff are done to to update it. It's not that big of a deal because the main change in that 8,000 update is stuff to do with using the thumb drive. So if you don't necessarily use the thumb drives all that much, um, it isn't really going to matter to you. But even if you do the update and it fails, you can go back to the old firmware if you need to. But always, no matter whether you're updating uh, a software, firmware, whatever, make sure you give yourself days to work with it and try it. And don't, I've seen guys do this and it makes me want to throat punch them where they'll, I just updated and I don't know why it's crashing because you didn't test it. You updated an hour before your gig. That's, it's stupid. I'm going to tell you you're doing stupid things. Test it. Um, just test it. That's all you got to do. It ain't rocket science. Um, but yeah, it's up to you on whether you want to do it or not, whether you want to wait. It's like I said, it's not crucial. Um, me with having no life outside of the DJ world, I do a lot of the updates and testing. Like I was out today researching, uh, some of the new updates with virtual and seeing what they're adding and, and the different machines that they're bringing into their world now. Um, I like to see as all of it's getting inclusive. I'm kind of curious is something which I'd like to kind of get an inside line with, uh, uh, with Pioneer putting out so many new controllers that are record box and not Serato or virtual or anything else, I'm kind of curious as to why, where they're going to go with that because I think it's isolating a portion of their audience, even though it may only be for a short time that they put it out record box only and then, and then allow it for Serato and virtual and whatnot. Um, I just, I think that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They're trying to push their software in, in which is fine. But it's kind of interesting to me what they're doing, and I kind of like to get an inside. If anybody knows anybody, is is their goals with that? And because they're coming out with some awesome controllers, they really are. The one thousand, and then their new version of the, uh, the smaller, the smaller three, um, with the center, the seven inch center screen, um, which I think is really cool. And if they would put just one of the things on the on that one, the new one is I don't like is they only put four uh, pads on it instead of eight. And if they would put eight, then I might I might have drifted that direction. I don't know. Love my Denon, but I'm liking a lot of the stuff Pioneer's doing too. So, a couple minutes left. If you guys have any questions, holla. Tonight here in the studio, for those of you who don't know, I will be doing a video on this, is that I asked John a while back about I needed a controller that ran off USB power only for being able to do stuff in the studio testing where I didn't have to s hook up an entire controller with a power device. I just want something here at the desk to be able to test stuff. And he sent me the Hercules Universal DJ, and it is just one of everything I'm doing tonight is powered off of it, and it's running off the internal sound card. Um, you know, because it's the, stu the thing that I'm broadcasting from is where you're hearing the sound, and it's no electric power, runs off USB, and I've been, I'll be doing a video on it soon. Um, it doesn't, don't think of it as being something that you're going to be using out at a gig. It's not that type of thing, um, but it's, it, it can be a backup. And one of the things I pointed out that I was, again, funny that, that, that Pioneer put out that brand new one that's $1,000 with a big 7 inch center screen and it only has four uh, Q pads on it. And this little dinky thing has eight of them. So I don't know. It's interesting. So there will be stuff out like this soon that, that, that's being sent to me, and I get to do a little test. Again, it's probably not going to be something for the average DJ that's out there um, who's doing stuff because I would never use this out anywhere, ever. Um, but it's, like I said, my purpose for it here in the studio is to be able to plug a cord that's always in, test something, do something, unplug it, don't have to worry about extra cords, one USB cord only. Um, here is a question from Day and Night DJs. MJ, have you used the new improved sound switch with your MCX-8000? Um, number one, uh, I do not have the 8000. I've only tested it. I own the 7000. And second, I have not used sound switch at all, other than other than just some research testing of it. I because I don't use a lot of DMX out. Um, again, uh, the mo most mixed DJs don't really hook up lights and sound that often. Like I honestly um, have speaker. I'm talking speakers, you know, because I have uh, uh, the QSC K12s. Um, I maybe have them out a dozen times a year. That's it. And I'm DJing two to five times a week, and I only have my speakers out and lights maybe a dozen times a year. So a lot of that stuff I don't dive into deeply because I just don't use it enough. And I just don't, I think sound switch is awesome, but I, I, I'm going to have to wait for the, the cost of the box to come down a little bit before I jump in there and try to do some stuff with it. Plus I'm, I'm the worst DMXing. I'm the absolute worst. I'm an idiot when it comes to it. 
Um, I'm loving the fact they're putting out some of the stuff now with the remote controls for the lights, like like the gig bars that I own. I love my gig bars. <laughs> it's it's idiot proof for people like me who aren't into that and don't really use it all that much. I, I used them at a gig last Saturday and they were great. You know, peered, you can you know master slave them together, and I had one on each side of the room and just created some colorful ambience. But I have not tested that yet. I know they can do some amazing stuff, and maybe I can get someone who can do us, do us a full demo on the sound switch. Uh, thank you, day and night. You've just given us a show topic. Thank you. And that's all it takes is from you guys is to just drop these little topics out there, and, and we can run with them. Um, we're almost out of time. There is another show after this, so make sure you guys stick around Disc Jockey News. Uh, a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, I apologize if the quality of video wasn't all that great tonight. Again, we're working on this. we come up with some issues lately. We're not sure really what, why, what it's going on, but we are definitely working on them. Um, if you have any questions, drop me a line. If you have questions about my DJ classes, send me a message. I'm on all of the social medias, or you can hit me up with uh, email, whatever you choose. Um, but I definitely thank you guys for tuning in, tolerating the, the little craziness of the show sometimes. Um, enjoy it. Share it. Go out there. Click the like button. Share it with all everybody you know about these questions, about especially with some of the younger DJs who are trying to get into this. Give them a place where they can go and learn a little bit, a place where they don't feel like they're judged. Because um, as a new G DJ growing up, you know, I've seen a lot of young guys that have told me, um, MJ, you're the only person that will answer my questions when I have questions. And, that, again, it's kind of why I kind of created this show is to be able to answer questions for a beginning DJ where, who would not know the difference between a wa wave and an MP3. And this is a place where you come and ask things like that and, and not feel like you're being judged by a DJ saying you're a, cra you're a crappy DJ, you don't know that, or you don't whatever. Uh, everybody has to begin somewhere. You know, so and that's where I'm hoping this show kind of develops and grows. And again, we're going to maybe try to get guys like Ivan and those guys on here to go into some deep stuff too. maybe do some deep diving shows. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for tuning in until next time. Uh, take care of yourselves and also take care of each other. All right. God bless. <laughs>